This is Dr. David Klein with Stages of Life Medical Institute in Longwood, Florida. So I've got another little quick uh, bit of wisdom that I'd like to convey, an instruction to, something to think about, something not to think about, something to ignore or incorporate into your life. And it's called taking care of business. Taking care of business. Now, what does this mean? You know, in, in obvious terms, quote unquote, you might be looking at your business. What does it take to keep something running in the event of, in the event of this, in the event of that, emergency, disaster? Business interruption insurance. This is something that a lot of businesses never think of. It's very, very inexpensive. I suspect it's going to be a topic in months to come. What do you do for the next disaster? So it's kind of like disability insurance for your business. Disability insurance personally is very expensive but business interruption insurance is not. You have to take care of your business or your business will not take care of you. Surviving, how do you survive another disaster and what and who is gonna take your place in the event that you do not? What are the, uh, what, what's, what are your instructions in the event that you should become ill, disabled, or dead? So these things have to be mapped out or the people that depend on you are going to not be able to depend on you. So personally, I've got 22 families that I feed, a bunch of contractors that come in and work for me. And if I don't show up, or if I get sick, or if I get run over or shot, a lot of people go without food. This is a big deal in my life. So I pay attention to several other things, business interruption to be certain. But you take personal responsibility for making decisions in your life. So when I got married a second time, bit of personal irresponsibility perhaps, I stopped riding my motorcycle. Why? Two reasons. One, my wife has a broken neck. She really feels uneasy on the back of a motorcycle. One bad bump and she's you know doing badly. But more so, I've got somebody else that's now relying on me. Very important. And I was reminded of this by the people in my, my medical practice. Don't do this because we need you right now. And I'm the only doctor here. So another bit of irresponsibility is not having a survivor. And that's not always so easy. It's taken me years of, of looking people over and deciding that it's better to be without than to have a bad one. What about maintenance of your health? This is another piece of personal responsibility. Nobody has uh, a bit of responsibility to take care of you. You have to do this yourself. So it's like becoming an adult. You move out of your house. Okay, a lot of kids never do. God bless the ones that do. Okay. You have to make arrangements to have your teeth taken care of because your mom isn't going to be there telling you got to go to the dentist to get the hygienist to, to work on you. It doesn't work that way anymore. Selection of, a, of, a, of a, a life partner, wickedly important. Okay, these are the sorts of things that you have to, you have to look at. But maintenance of your health is something that really only you can do. And what does this mean? It means the time to start is now eating properly. You may not be eating as well as you think you are. I have patients come in on a daily basis, tell me how cleanly they eat. Oh, I eat great. And they're eating garbage. Okay, they're eating an imbalanced meal. They're not paying attention to the appropriate things in order to stay healthy. And this is the reason why they come in with diabetes, thyroid disease, blood pressure issues, depression, sleep deprivation, resulting in depression, constipation, and the list goes on and on and on. Because most of these disorders can be treated by changing one's diet, adjusting what's being eaten, and adjusting lifestyle. They call them lifestyle-related illnesses. That means that you're doing something wrong resulting in sickness, so what are we gonna do, give you a pill? It doesn't work that way. So you have to make decisions there. And then you have to make decisions uh, with regards to the future. Making, um, let's say, adjustments, making course arrangements based upon what you see. So this particular uh, epidemic that we've got going on here, this pandemic that we're experiencing. I've got people saying, well, you know, how can you remain so calm through this? Because I've seen disasters before. They don't always have this color, this taste, or this shape, but they happen with nauseating regularity. Financial crisis here, financial crisis there, Chernobyl here, Chernobyl there. We all have these problems. They do come and they go, but you have to be prepared for the next one. So what's the next disaster gonna be here? More than likely, it's gonna be a return of COVID in the springtime, because that's just what's gonna happen. Until they come up with an appropriate inoculation, this is going to be a recurring theme. 
my prediction is that we're going to end up with a subset of the population that's going to refuse to get inoculated, and that's going to be a very long time to convince these people that they're doing the wrong thing. So you have a responsibility not just to yourself, not just to your, your religious cult or religion, but you have a responsibility to the population uh, as a whole. Now, I am the furthest thing, okay, from a collectivist or a world whatever. No, I'm, I'm your basic independent with a leaning towards the right, I've been told. But you do have a responsibility to the people around you, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing here. I pay for this. I'm doing this on, on my own. The idea here is to, if I can help one person out there, I think I might have done something good. So look around and ask yourself, what can you do for your community? What can you do to leave a difference? What can you do to make somebody else a little bit better? And the last thought is this. Okay, if you think that your, your particular group, your church, your uh, whatever it happens to be, uh, is a charitable organization and you're a charitable person because you give to it, you become a charitable individual when you give to somebody else's church or somebody else's cause. That is an act of selflessness, not giving to, to a self-interest group. This is Dr. David Klein from Stages of Life Medical Institute. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you. Bye.